Hey guys, this is Hydra from X Trades, and in this video, um, this is going to be more of an educational video. So, um, I'm going to be going over two advanced rules for um, success in the markets, right? So, first thing, 90% of traders fail, right? This is something that a lot of us know, and in fact, it might even be higher than 90%, but point is, a lot of traders fail, and uh, if you want to succeed in the markets, you have to do what the major. You have to do the opposite of what the majority is doing, and uh, that's how you should align your thinking as well in the markets. And um, yeah, so if there's a lot of people going to one certain trade, thinking one certain stock is very bullish, there's a very high probability that that trade will not work out. Um, for example, a lot of stuff is pumped on CNBC, right? Um, and a lot of those picks actually don't end up doing well because what happens is the majority of people that don't watch the markets regularly just listen to whatever these people are saying and they buy it without thought, right? And they that trade becomes the majority and that's the reason why those trades typically end up failing because everyone's in it. So to succeed in trading, my point is you have to go against what... The majority are doing and um, yeah so there's two real rules or two main rules that I've noticed that deviate from how how the majority think right when it comes to trading so the first thing is taking small losses most traders and most investors in general people who are in the markets hate taking losses it's most people cannot cut their losses quickly they try to, when something goes against them they actually end up trying to add more to their position, average down, and uh, tr try to see if there's a way to basically get back to break even and then try to cut the position lose, right? This is what majority of people do. But to be in the 10% or even less than 10%, you have to learn how to take losses very quickly and make sure that your losses are very small. This is very key if you want to make it in trading. Um, Many people try to set stop losses but end up moving them or some people set mental stop losses and don't end up following through on them, right? This is a very big problem. Many traders fail this or many traders face this problem and if you can conquer this one thing, then you are ahead of a lot, a lot of traders, right? So taking small losses is extremely important. Um, and so the first step is to... First step is to implement stop losses, right? This is basic, right? Everyone implements, or a lot of people implement stop losses, but not everyone follows through, right? So actually following through is step number one, right? If you can follow through your stop losses consistently, you're doing something right. You're ahead of a lot of traders already. But to take it to the next level, some you have to learn how to take losses before the market takes you out. What does that mean? So before your stop loss gets hit, sometimes you have to learn to take s smaller losses than like your stop loss, right? So for example, if a stock is at 50 and your stop loss is at 48 and the stock looks like it's closing around 49, then you want to stop out immediately even before your stop is hit. So learning how to take losses before the market takes you out is also very, very important. That way you limit your losses even um, smaller, right? And the reason that you do this, so there's this thing, or I've seen a lot of top traders um, where they don't take, like these are swing traders, right? So they don't swing red positions into the next day. So for example, if you're buying something and it closes below your buy point, they get rid of it right away. And this is very advanced. A lot, <laughs> not many people do this because they're like, why? There's no point, right? Just let it let the market see if it actually hits my stop and then get out. Because a lot of people are scared that if you get out too early, then it's going to end up um, going higher the next day, right? But the thing is, if you can keep your losses smaller and has, like half the size of what they actually normally are, then your small your losses are even smaller and you can always buy back the next day this is very key most people don't realize this you can always buy back and typically typically you're gonna have to buy back higher but the probability of the trade working out if it triggers again is very high um so that's 
rule number one. So this is very tricky to implement because most people don't have the discipline to actually follow through on their stop losses, first of all. But if you can follow step one, then uh, level two would be to <clears throat> try to not swing any red positions and try to take losses before the market takes you out. Um, this is very advanced. Not a lot of people do this. All right, let's move on to step two. Press your winners, right? So the best trades go right away. What does that mean? Um, so a lot of times, there's a lot of different setups, but sometimes some stocks will like, take off right away and they'll never look back. And those are typically the best trades. And this is what, and this comes back to this thing, right? So if you're buying a stock and it closes red, then there's a good, very good chance this is not going to be the top trade of the year, right? The top trades are the top trades always go right away. So typically, when you're buying, you should see a move all the way up to 51, 52 already. Um, so yeah, these two, two rules go uh, hand in hand. So if if the stock is closing red, or if the stock is red, um, or if the stock is red on your initial buy, then there's a very good chance it's not the best trade, and you should cut it right away. And um, so yeah, second point, pressure winners. So when the stock is actually working, you want to be making sure that you're adding to your position. Most people don't want to do this because they don't like the concept of averaging up. But typically, what works in the market continues to work. Carvana is a very good example. That stock has been rallying like like crazy amount. Like I think it's up seven, almost seven hundred percent up this year. But um, insane, insane rally, right? The best stocks continue to keep going, and uh, Carvana was a very good example. So you typically want to try to add to your winners whenever given the opportunity. And this is um, pretty hard, right? It's hard mentally like to add to a winner because you're, you're, when you have a winner, most people are thinking uh, take profits, right? So majority think take profits. Right, this is what ninety percent of traders think when they have a winner. They want to take profits right away, lock in profits, and then just uh, get out and then use that money and then put it onto the next trade. Right, but what uh, to? But again, going back to going against the majority, you don't want to be taking profits. You want to actually be adding to your positions, right? So when you're adding to your positions, there's a way you have to do it too. So for example, if you buy 100 shares on your initial buy, then when you're adding, you want to be adding 50, um, whenever the next buy setup is, and then 25, and then incrementally slow down, right? And typically, you're going to get three waves, so three really good rallies, and then the third rally is always the one that typically, typically gets very extended, and is typically uh, the best time to be selling into strength. So those are the keys when it comes to pressing your winners right so the best trades go right away and when you find those best trades you want to be adding to your positions versus taking profits taking profits is what the majority does but if you want to set yourself apart you want to go out of your comfort zone and actually add to your positions and average up and when you're adding you want to be making you want to make sure that you're adding smaller and smaller so that way your average or average cost isn't getting too messed up right but yeah this is pretty much, uh, or these are pretty much the core concepts, and these are more advanced. Um, most people know about stop losses. Most people know about protecting your winners, right? Making sure that you move your stop up, things like that. But these are more advanced. You want to make sure that you're actually averaging up when you get your winners. You want to learn that, you, or you want to know that the best trades go right away. This is also something that that not a lot of people know. But if you've been in the market for a couple years now, you you've noticed this pattern where the best trades always go right away and uh, they usually have some sort of catalyst and big volume and when that happens so there's usually one really big move and then some consolidation very nice flag pattern and then they go right away right they won't look back ever again so those are the trades that you want to be looking for everything else it doesn't matter you want to be cutting for like very small losses and doing this your win percentage might be very low probably below 50 percent but when you do catch that winner, it's going to be very, um, it's going to be a very big return in terms of risk reward. So, uh, so this is this type of system will still result in a positive expectancy. But yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video.
And if anything was confusing, please feel free to let me know and I can clarify. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in.